On Wednesday, we saw the two factions of the Labour Party turn the presidential tribunal court into a battlefield. But on Thursday, the crisis rocking the party took a new dimension as the national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abure, and the three other national executive members announced their return. Today, we'll be discussing these developments on The Breakfast this morning. We'll also be taking a look at the headlines on some of the national dailies with Up the Press when we get joined by an analyst to look at these headlines in depth. Good morning. I am Maureen Menongwe Zigwe. Good to have you join us again on The Breakfast. And I am Justin Academy. Many thanks for being a part of the show. This morning, we trust you are doing well wherever you are. Good morning, Maureen. Good morning, Justin. You yeah. look bright and good. Yes, I am good. And <laughs> that's me being a good neighbor there, trying to <laughs> make your spirit feel good. Yes, I feel good already. That's the essence of, uh, you know, neighborliness and everything. That, you know, you should know and care about uh, the person just around you. Exactly. Our theme of the day is being a neighbor. Who is a neighbor? Yeah. Are you a good neighbor? Oh, well, so most people might think that uh, when you talk about neighbor, uh, neighborhood, as it were, it's just about the people who live just uh, by your house or mm. something. But then it, it, it's beyond just uh, where you live. It's about uh, your space. You know, your neighbors, uh, even your colleagues where you work with, uh, you should, uh, because you see them every other time and you guys interact in one way or the other. So you should know about um, the things that go on around them. You know, that's one of the things that, that make you, um, uh, makes you a, a good neighbor. Yeah, incidentally, people who, I say that repeatedly, the people you work with mm. have also become your family. True. Because you spend a better part of your day with them every yes. week, True. Monday to Friday. True. And being a good neighbor, uh, you know, in this, in, it, we used to be so communal in this part of the world. Mm. It's one of the things that I believe people outside of Africa, people outside of Nigeria, admire about us mm. but we are losing that part that essential part of us where we knew our neighbors mm. you knew who lived in the building beside you 10 buildings away from you True. and all of that and you all know that. their names you knew their names you, you know, knew their know children the school their children attend exactly. not the cars they drive mm -hmm. you know but lately everyone is just uh, into themselves everyone is just up uh, chasing after the bread, as it were, just yeah. uh, trying to eke out a livelihood one way or the other. And with the pressures of, uh, and stress of uh, not just Lagos, the country, most people are just interested in uh, leaving very early to get that job, to get that money, so they can actually tend to their immediate needs and, of course, that of their families. And uh, so, sometimes you'd be surprised that and some people live in a particular building, but they don't even know uh, who stays there. Uh, the next flat. The next flat, which yeah. is so wrong. Uh, it's, it's, we are losing our values, trust me. Yes, because, I mean, it, it is a common saying, or it used to be, that nobody owns a child. The community trains a child. Agree. So yes. you see my children uh, on the street mm -hmm. at the wrong time, mm -hmm. you question them. Of course. You may even take them back to me. Yes. I see your children vis-a-vis. -vis, I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But today people are afraid to correct. You're afraid to talk to your neighbor's child because mm -hmm. you don't want to be accused of mm -hmm. hunting or mm -hmm. trying to hurt the child. And, and, and that boils down to the fact that so many bad things are happening today. Mm -hmm. So people have become too cautious. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's just not doing us good as, yeah. human, as human beings. Yes, I'm still talking about human beings and humanity. When we don't know our neighbors or when we don't interact with people around us, mm -hmm. a lot of things uh, just um, happen and go under the carpet because uh, uh, we don't want, like you said, we don't want to be witch hunted or seen as a people who uh, just want to poke our noses in other people's business. But sometimes, some children might be under some sort of abuse. Some people might be, you know, in, uh, might be living in fear, but uh, uh, they can't really talk about it because um, they feel that it's not um, their, in their place to do so. Yes, you, you, it's, 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 it's a very critical uh, thing you just stated. We should look out for what's going on with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, when we go to top trending, we'll be talking about yes, that. Um, and then not relating with neighbors is also one of the things that True. has caused... Uh, sent a lot of people into depression. 
I agree. I it agree. has sent so many people. Most Nigerians, well, some Nigerians living abroad are seriously complaining. It's one of the things they miss about home. Mm. The fact that, because over there, mm -hmm. you know, well, you know, it's work, their business. house, work mm -hmm. house, except you're among the few mm -hmm. who socialize and, and, and move around. Mm. And, but most of them out there just into themselves. They go to work, they go back home, they go to work. And so they miss they miss that communal life that yes. they enjoyed uh, back home in Nigeria. So mm -hmm. we just cannot afford to stop being good neighbors to one another. It's crucial to our psychological well-being. It is, it is. Uh, because uh, if uh, you are close to your neighbors, if you guys interact uh, one way or the other, some people might tend to open up to you if um, they think um, that they can trust in you, they can confide in you. Um, over time, you guys have shared uh, things together as far issues around the, the community but then they might want to they might just need somebody at that particular point in time to talk to and um, if uh, there's no one to uh, lend um, an ear or just to listen uh, like you said depression we just go there from depression who knows some people could just end up being suicidal mm, being suicidal mm. and haven't we seen the increase in the rate of suicides lately mm. and another thing that has happened also is that we have replaced the usual neighborliness and neighbor mm. yeah neighborliness into it's become virtual now you have <laughs> associations of these and so, so neighbors now interact online and what's as against groups? yes as against talking to one another and and, and knowing about what is going on mm -hmm. and what at least to the extent that your neighbor would want you to know True. but at least there's something different between talking to someone one on one and just chatting online mm -hmm. yes. well from the theme of the day we'll go to top trending and our first top trending is um Shen Kuti, the situation with Shen Kuti. Uh, the secret hearing we read about, which uh, says that the magistrate uh, took him, he's been taken to court mm. and that um, he was rushed to court by the Nigerian police for uh, extension uh, to detain him uh, for four more days. Mm. Uh, these are some of the things we're hearing. Um, we do not know uh, how long this is going to take, but the things we keep hearing on the news over this is beginning to make us wonder uh, what exactly is going on with that case? Well, but I, I thought that he was actually granted bail on Tuesday. Um, by now, that uh, he should be home and uh, uh, should be able to come uh, when he's actually needed at the police station since the investigations are going. But uh, right now, a whole lot of um, things are happening a secret um, uh, uh, meeting with a uh, secret hearing with magistrate and all of that. I wonder if that is the norm because uh, these things uh, should actually be in the open. There's a whole lot that is going on around that case. But then we can't really talk about it so much because um, you know it's still in court that uh, would be subjudice as it is. Mm. So we'll just watch and see how it plays out. Uh, mm. Different people from different quarters are beginning mm. to air their views on it because he is a, a public figure. Yes, he is. And not just him, he's a father, uh, he's, he's the son of a, a very, very public yes, figure back Apple in the days of yours. Mm. So, it's not somewhat, uh, something that can just be ignored or swept True. under the carpet. Not so we'll just watch and see how it's playing out. But one of the things that is thrown up also is you not compare how the police treat Nigerians vis-a-vis mm. -vis how Nigerians are beginning to treat them mm -hmm. uh, as, as exemplified by what, by what Shenwood did. did. Yes. Even though people, we are seriously condemning what Shenwood yes, we did. Are. Because uh, ordinarily there should be a no, uh, there should be like a, like I said the other day there should be a symbiotic relationship between the people and the police because they need each other to do their work. The police need information from the mm -hmm. people that uh, they are policing and uh, you know uh, guarding as it were, and um, the citizens also need to be friends as it were too with uh, the police because if you are not friendly, there's no warm relationship. Um, things will just go awry. All right, so we'll wait and see how that plays out with Shion Kuti. And we'll move to the next top trending, which is the fact that the Federal Ministry of Works on Wednesday closed down Ijora or Lokwa Bridge Jora. in Lagos State uh, because of damage caused by vandals mm. and vandals tampered with the major reinforcement elements of the road. And so there's diversion and uh, 
advisory has been given to commuters okay. to look for alternative routes, routes. Uh, to get their way uh, to the to island. The you know, uh, Mara, when, when things like this happen, at the end of the day, we are the ones that suffer because uh, when you do diversion or reroute and everything, a lot of people would that, actually... Look at that deal. Yes. When I saw it yesterday, I saw the picture yesterday, I thought, I wonder how why on earth all... did this happen? Yes, uh, say they say it's um, uh, activities of um, vandals. vandals. You know, yes. but I wonder why people would actually vandalize, um, you know, infrastructure that is actually meant for the good of everyone. Because if you did that just because you want to get some things and make some quick sale out of the hill, um, um, vandalism, people, your family members, uh, would be the ones um, that would suffer at the end of the day. Yes, if the traffic has been diverted now mm. from Ido to Ijoro, Loye, uh, mm. Papa at the intersection. Uh, on the pass at Ijora Olokba on uh, control flow mm. and reconnected at the U-turn to Ijoro, Loye or Papa. So this is the advisory given out by the government to people, commuters who go through that route. Look at that massive how on earth did they excavate, <sighs> cut out a portion of this uh, road? Is what I tried to wrap my head around yesterday as it's, I looked just, at the picture. Yes, it's just hard to really understand why some people would actually conceive of the idea of wanting to do such damages to public assets, to public infrastructure. Uh, I mean, what could be their reasons, really? Uh, they want to. What, what, what they say, <laughs> Marin, it's just hard to fathom, really. Yeah, how some it people is hard think. to fathom. It is hard to fathom. Okay, the third top trending is Anambra pregnant woman brutalizes seven year old nephew. Oof. 24 year old Anambra woman mm. brutalized this little girl, uh, little boy, Sunday, his name. Uh, seven year old, look at that, mm. look at that. Seven year old boy, just brutalized by his own aunt. The woman is actually related to her fa uh, his father. So um, she's pregnant, she's just 24, and she's able to meet out this kind of wickedness on another person's child, her own blood. Her relative. own blood, yeah. He's as much as much, uh, as, um, um, just like. He's own, uh, her own son. I mean, it's your, your, your brother's son, and uh, you maltreat him. Whatever the boy or the child could have look done. At him. I mean, it doesn't the, the, warrant I mean, all of this uh, mistreatment, this uh, uh, brutality. He's just a child, and the trauma that he's going to go with for you know, the next couple of years will just be look so Look at so her, harrowing. look at the pregnant woman. And we saw a similar thing play out on the 12th of May. This very, yeah, this last week we saw ago. another yeah. case of a nine-year-old girl. Uh, her name, Idima. Mm. Same, she looked, exa she looked exactly the same way Sunday is looking. Her eyes covered yeah. because of the brutality. She was hit with pestle, um, all manner of bruises on her body. Mm. That's the same thing we've seen on, on Sunday. Uh, the Ministry of Women and Social uh, Welfare in Anambra State responded when neighbors, out okay. of concern, okay. they saw this boy Sunday and, and took him to the ministry. Mm. The ministry immediately uh, went into action and arrested the woman. That was the same thing that also happened in the case of Idima. Yeah. Idima, with all the bruises, I mean, if you, when you look at the pictures, you wonder how. How does a human being do what happened, this? What happened to, a to child? Ha our humanity? We seem to have lost the essence of um, being humans in the first place. But the, uh, the, another thing you want to ask yourself is mm. the parents that release their <laughs> seven year old, their nine year old to anybody. Mm. If, how do you do that? How do you send a seven year old child who has not fully matured? <laughs> You know, when I saw Idima's case, I thought, oh, this is quite unfortunate. Perhaps her parents are no longer living. Mm. And then I read the full story, and I saw that her parents were alive, and that they said they had actually given the child over to the woman to assist her because she just gave birth to a set of twins. Okay. What do you expect a nine-year-old to, to do? To assist um, someone who just gave birth. That, that one is also a child, a child trying to assist another child. Another child. Uh, how does it work? And the thing that this woman is pregnant and mm. that she's actually doing this brutality on a seven-year-old. Has she ever thought about um, the child that she is carrying in her own womb? What happens if someone else did exactly the same um, 
you know, mistreatment that she is given to this child, how would she really feel? What happened to motherliness? What happened to motherhood? She is supposed to be an expectant. I don't know if she's had any child before now, but she's expectant, so she should understand these little things. I think the Ministry of Women and Social Welfare in Anambra State will mm. have to stand up and make sure that there's a law that prohibits mm. children going to live with any family other than their parents. Most times you hear that it's poverty, the parents cannot really take care of their children. If you can't take care of a child, then why bring up so many children in the first mm -hmm, place? Mm -hmm. That's just, those are, those are just, those are just it's, the issues. They got to do that. And it's so unfortunate that we, be, we see and hear of all these stories over and over again. It's, it's not new, though. No, it's it's social like that. media that's like helping home. us to see and hear mm. all of this. It's just so unfortunate that um, women and men mm. in Nigeria seem to think that when somebody comes to live under your roof, that that person becomes an animal mm. to be treated as such. It's Instead of yourself. being responsible and mm. being a father and a mother to that child, you then turn yourself into some sort of monster. You see, see, see situations where, uh, you know, like you said, the, a family situation, a man and a wife, they have kids and they brought her maybe their nephew or some sort of help, and they now tend to treat her the helper as some slave, like um, someone playing second fiddle. Mm -hmm. uh, the children go uh, to better schools and um, the so-called helper, you know, doesn't even go to school in yeah. the first place. In the case of Idima, she never, she has not been enrolled into any kind of school and she was nine years already. She's nine years already. Yeah, she's been like nine. in primary three or primary four already. Yeah. Yeah, and so on, on, the, on, on the 9th of May, we also read of a couple who mm. were taken to court for raping, assaulting and raping the 19-year-old girl living with them. It's also in the news. So mm. at night, the woman would take her husband to go rape the girl living under them. I Both of them were actually involved in that. A lot of perversion going on today, Justin, is, is, is just so mind-boggling. And so those who are saddled with the responsibility of protecting minors. Yes. In this case of 19, she's 19, well, she's, she's an, an adult. adult yeah. so, but those who are saddled with the responsibility of taking care of minors, mm. these ministries, Ministry of Women Affairs and Social, whatever, they should make sure that they begin to go out to monitor these homes. They should. Yeah. They should. And for children, for people who cannot really take care of their children at worst, they go to these uh, ministries of government and uh, maybe have their children placed in foster homes so where they can get better treatment uh, than getting this sort of um, brutality on their kids. It's just some harrowing experience, really. Yeah, it's something um. that the society needs to really look into. Mm. While you're watching The Breakfast, it is the Friday Flex edition, and uh, we'll be back to take a look at the headlines on some of the national dailies. Do stay with us.